we've had a beautiful dog, loyal dog, for so long. He's married to a beautiful wife who was pregnant and about to deliver a baby. She delivered her baby and she died. She passed away upon delivering her baby. Of course, the prince was very sad, but at the same time, he had got a new son. So his feeling is so confused. He's very sad about the loss of his wife. And he's very happy of having a new child. One day, because he loved hunting and he cannot go uh, without his child, he was taking care of his son. So he took the son with him to the hunting trip. In a little hut, he let his son stay in the crib while he was asleep. And the dog was watching after and protecting that little child. When he came back from his hunting trip, just before the sunset, only to be astonished with the dog full of blood, his color has changed into red because of the blood. He looked around to look for his child, and all he saw is the crib of the child tipped upside down. Immediately, he grabbed his stealing knife and went to the dog and stabbed him once, and stabbed him twice, and stabbed him three times. And the fourth time as he stabbed his dog, he heard his, his kid child crying. cry. He stopped and looked around to look for his child, only to see him behind woods, protected. He carried his child. He was so happy again because he had his child alive. But he was really sad. Why? He lost the dog. He lost his he lost the dog. dog. And her eyes are dog. Dog. scared. To that fact, he named the county that he lived in of the name of the dog. And he never forgetting himself for killing his loyal dog. Who heard the story? Anybody heard the story? Yes, just now. Okay, okay thank you. Just now. You heard it before? You heard it? It's an old story. Yes. And we can capture our audience with a story. And what just uh, uh, Alia. Sada Alia said regarding being afraid or being unconfident, starting with a story will take that away from you. I just did that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you know the story and, and even ancient, ancient people realize on telling stories. So storytelling is the best way to get into the mind of the audience. Yes, please. It would be a lot better if it has a lot to do with the subject matter. So, and, and don't worry, you have a lot of stories. Sometimes you go to the Jamia yes. and you end up creating a story with the shopkeeper, with the lady who stops you to promote certain stuff. Listen to her and create from that a story to tell your audience. And there are many stories. A story that, of course, if your story is happened to you personally, you'll be more passionate and you can be very well, you know, touch your audience. Because audience, as Ali said, they have other things to do. They have their tweets to take care of. Okay? So how you capture them is by telling a story or sometimes even a joke. If it's a real story, it would be a lot better. If it's about yourself, it's even a lot better because you'll be more confident to say that story. But when you say a story, we have heard a lot of people telling stories. Sometimes, when I am listening to people telling stories, I sleep. 
10 minutes. But when the storytelling is with action, is with movements, using your voice, the one up. you know, all these are non-verbal communications that we should use to tell the story, to capture our audience. So when we are sad, we have to speak slowly. And when we're happy, or the story is happiness, then you tend to say it faster and longer. So you play with your voice. This is what we're going to talk about today. How are you doing? Who is now more encouraged to say, to go ahead and come in for a presentation? Oh, inshallah. Good. <laughs> Good. It's easy. And as um, a famous actor says, I think his name is um, Anthony, no, not Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. Anthony Queen? No. Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins, yeah. What a man can do, another can. Yes. And what we mean by a man is in sun. Yeah, yeah. No, anybody. Yeah. The John, no. Yeah. Hmm? No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a human, meaning yeah. human, a man, meaning in sun. Okay, therefore it's not prejudiced on this. Okay, so everyone can do whatever. What Ghalia just said, anyone can do it. What I'm doing, anyone can do it, provided you have three things. And we call them the success triangle. Yes. You need to have the knowledge, which is in your mind. Skills. You need to have the skills, which is in your hands. Yes. And you need to have... Practicing. Practicing. No. Knowledge. Presenting. Motive. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge is number one. Knowledge skills? No. Mm. Your goal? No. What else? Courage. Motive. Attitude. Yes. Yeah. Kind of a motive. Attitude. You want to learn. How did we learn how to ride a bicycle? Yeah. Anybody know how to ride a bicycle? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Nobody? Yes, yes, yes. All of us. Uh, nobody. Okay, good. Uh, how did we learn? We practice. We had to fall down. Yes. Many times. Many times. Yes. And if you stay down, will you be able to learn? Yes, of you course. You have to get up again yeah. and ride the bike. Yeah. And I remember the first time I was in the bike because I want to, the attitude part, Yes. the desire part, which is in your heart, you want to learn something. And because I saw my friends driving or riding the bike in the neighborhood, I said to Daddy, I want a bike. He said, well, we finished school and I can buy you a bike. And, you know, if someone comes back into Hana, I got my first bike. But back then, I'm older, way, way older than you guys, but we didn't have those softy wheels, safety wheels. Yes. We only had, you know, my older brother would hold me with a bike like this, mm -hmm. and then he runs with me, <laughs> and then he let me go. And then I go straight, and then I fell. I go straight, and then I fell. Many times. And the further I go straight, the confidence and goes me. up. And I feel so better, and I wanted to learn more and more. So, uh, and, and I fell several times only to get up again, and I learned. Swimming, same way. Language, same way. If we don't practice it, if we don't have the will, if we don't want to, we will not learn it. So anything in life could be learned. No matter, leadership, whatever it is. Said, somebody said they are born to be leaders, somebody says no, they're taught. Anybody can, can be. know anybody. Yeah. And this was a famous actor who said it. What a man can do, anybody can. Another can. can. Another can. Okay, are you okay now? Yes. Yes. Okay, this is uh, our presentation. And in, in, when you're presenting, you want to keep your presentation simple. Long gone the days when your complication, when your presentation is supposed to be complicated. We live in the information age, knowledge age, and we have a lot of information. You know, Hamza Tepe comes here and he tells us certain things. Doctor, he comes and tells us certain things, and then we go home. And we check the internet, there are a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Newspapers, TV stations, radio stations, thousands of stations. In the old days, we had two stations. Yes. yes. 
it was like maybe 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, that's it. But we have a lot of information. Yes. What we do with those kind of information, we tend to look for simple stuff. Stuff that can go to our mind. Directly, yeah. That's why it became change from being thankful Kuwait al Wapani, she mean kaf, yes, ila al Wapani only. Or al BK in English. That's why the old breed or camel can hmm. know. Yes. Now he is walking, not only walking, he is doing water skiing, right? All right. So that tells you that even and decay change to be simple. A lot of organizations they become simple. So if you want your audience to be captured, make your presentation as simple as possible. Keep it simple. They're not going to walk away with lots of data like the picture suggested. Mm -hmm. You want, uh, you know, the message that they get and the confidence that they will apply that message or that uh, thing that you're talking about. Show something. So it's not about telling. It's about showing. Yes. Using your body language, using your body, using your tone of voice, using your expressions to uh, uh, say your story or to, to uh, send your message out. Tease before you tell. I try to tease you in my story. So basically what you need to do is don't say it all at once. Mm -hmm. Let the audience wait for what's coming next. So you kind of tease them and we love to be teased. We don't like straightforward stuff. That's why we go to mystery movies. Okay, so keep your presentation on track. These are the three ideas that we want to focus on. Five tips. It's okay to drink water while you do that thing. Of course. So stories and examples. Use stories and examples to as my, our friend here suggested, to complement the message that you are about to do. Because we all remember stories. Parachute in. Just come out loud and say what you want to say. That way you capture them a lot better. Instead of, you know, going through the agenda, this is what we're going to be discussing today, this is number one, this is number two, this it kind of, you know, gets your audience off a bit. Uh, just parachute your idea and tell what you want to say. Uh, please don't tell and bring reality into the, the story or bring the reality into your presentation. Ali well, did a fantastic job here, you know, by imitating, you know, the hair pulling, you know, or the hijab fixing or touching, you know. It, you know, for a lady, even for men, by the way, we put to a girl when they try to, you know, fix the sabbath all the time. If I were to a girl, my, my pizza would be back here. Because, you know, that's why I wear, you know, maybe, uh, I don't wear it because I move a lot. In my work, when I'm my first job as an engineer, until I got into the marketing area, I move a lot, so it doesn't help me. So when you touch yourself, that gives the audience that you are not confident. Halas, go to the bathroom, <laughs> to the toilet before five minutes or 10 minutes, look at yourself, check out yourself, do some exercises, you know, so your posture becomes stronger. Uh, I, th I think one of the, uh, the beauty most beautiful lady on earth. Her name is what? Sophia Loren. Sophia Loren. Oh, that yeah. was in the old days. In the old days, okay. yes. The, the most beautiful now old is, uh, lady. Ashwarya. Now is Ashwarya. Okay. Now is Ashwarya. Now is Ashwarya. Now is Ashwarya, I think. Uh, really? Yeah. Ashwarya. Ashwarya, yeah, yes. Okay. Ashwarya. But Sophia Loren, when, when, they, when they asked her, what's the secret of your beauty? Mm. 
Jesus is answered with one word. Smile. Posture. <laughs> yes. You know, posture, how you stand. And how you stand will reflect on your... on, on the whole here. It will reflect on your audience. <laughs> it will definitely reflect on your audience. But if you walk like this... Mm -hmm. You know, raise your hand, you know, your audience, you lose them. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll be How are you, ladies? Today we're going to talk about uh, or putting your hand in your pocket. Yes. You know, sometimes you have coins. You know, and you play with your coins while you're talking. And guess what happens to the audience? They will guess. What do you think? We can this? Well, we can. Okay? Uh, so, uh, you, you get your hand out. So imagine I'm talking to you, I'll tell you. And then we went into, into the desert, and then we went there. It doesn't make sense. You use your hand, you use your body uh, to get the reflection of your story. What did I lose now? Okay. Move on. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is about communication. This is a communication class, and a presentation is one part of it. And when you communicate, you're communicating to a lot of a bigger audience. That's why you are in public speaking, or it's called, uh, and it's the most feared skill that you can see. In America, they fear public speaking more than death. It's amazing. And in America, they teach them how to do public speaking since they were little. I remember my first public speaking that was in front of the university in front of my class in English 102. And the teacher or the professor told us, you have seven minutes to talk about any subject you want. Of course, any subject. I'm in California. I said, Kuwait. It's easy. <laughs> you know, I know everything about Kuwait. So I'm going to go and talk about Kuwait. I prepared everything, and it was my first time. So, and I was like, you know, I'm the type of outgoing and easygoing, and I have no problem. So I said, you know, I don't need to rehearse, I'll just walk in. Mm -hmm. So I walked in, and as soon as I saw some people looking at me, my knees even came. <laughs> oh my God. You know, what am I going to say? I forgot all yeah, the things that yeah. I was saying. I don't know what I said within that seven minutes. It was the longest. But then I knew the only way we learn when we ride a bicycle, yes. we have to get up again. So the more you do it, the more you will stay confident and you will be more, uh, more better than anybody. And uh, uh, what a man can do, another can. You can do it. Just put it in your mind that you are able to do it and follow the steps and just do it, practice with your family. Your neighbor. Say something, say it to them a story. And play with that story. Don't say it with a mono voice. No, put a, like an HD kind of uh, you know, presentation to your audience. And see what they say. With your friends. Yeah, have two, three of them. And tell them, this is what I'm gonna do. Pronto. And exercise with your friends and make them buddies. And let them criticize you in your tone of voice, in your body language, and so on. But it's all about how you look. It's all about how you look. And that the red part is 55%. That's the nonverbal communication. How you look, how you present yourself. Without the words, the words is 7% only. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that the words are not worth anything, no. But compared to the body language, the word is less. Compared to your tone of voice, the word is little. But words are important, like uh, we still remember 1963. The king, Martin Luther King, when he said, I have a dream. I have a dream that my uh, black daughter goes in the same bus yes. with the white folks. I have a dream that my black neighbor 
goes to the same school of the White Fox. And with that, I have a dream. He was able to uh, integrate uh, America. A long time ago, we still remember his word. Uh, and that guy, uh, Obama. Yes. And with his famous word when he said, we can. We can. can. Yes, we can. We can change. Yes. We can make a difference. And he didn't say, I can. No. He said, we can. And that's a much difference because he worked on everybody to be part of that change. It's not for him alone. And he said, he didn't say that I can by myself. It was all of them. This is too complicated. That's a mind map. I hope it's uh, clear in your, in your paper. But basically, this mind map takes you from all the things that you want to do in a presentation.